Six months after the fall of Jurassic World, sometime in June of 2016, Injun's gigantic Mosasaurus clone swam out of its lagoon home and into the open waters around Costa Rica. Since its escape, we've only had two confirmed sightings of this animal in the official timeline. The first of which is obviously its cameo at the end of Fallen Kingdom, which took place sometime after the eruption on Isla Nublar in 2018. The second comes from the short film Battle at Big Rock, where the reptile is seen devouring a great white shark after it attempts to hunt down a seal. But what exactly happened to it after that? The recent Dominion prologue showcased a small clip of the animal jumping out of the water and attacking a cage attached to a massive ship. So not only is it still alive, but it's going to be making some pretty big appearances in the next film, no matter what. But when it comes to what we've seen so far after the fall of Jurassic World, where did this thing go? How does it hunt? What has it been eating? And why hasn't this creature been killed? Well, in this video, I'm going to be going over a lot of questions surrounding the Mosasaur after it got away from the island, and try to make some educated guesses about what we can expect to see of it in the future of this franchise, especially in Jurassic World Dominion, where we know it will most certainly be making some kind of appearance. Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to go over just what exactly has been going on with Jurassic World's Mosasaurus. Now, I want to talk about this animal by going over some of the material that has been talked about behind the scenes. After Fallen Kingdom ends, we haven't really gotten too much information about it or its general survival outside of that random shark attack. So this video will hopefully be a fun look inside of how one of these things could possibly survive if similar situations lined up perfectly today. Now before I go any further, I want to mention to you guys that today's video is sponsored by CuriosityStream, the subscription streaming service that offers thousands of documentaries and non-fiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers. It even has exclusive originals. CuriosityStream is the Netflix for nerds, the Hulu for history buffs, and the Disney Plus for the scientists in us all. It's also extremely affordable at under $20 a year, so that's just $1.67 per month. Now one of the reasons I thought CuriosityStream would be such a cool idea to help sponsor this video was their wide selection of of dinosaur documentaries that they have available, especially this one called Amazing Dino World that even has a small segment that's more than congruent with what we're talking about today. This is the entertainment brand for people who want to know more, and it's available on Roku, Android, Xbox, iOS, Chromecast, Amazon, Apple, and several smart TVs as well. New shows come out every week, so whether you want to learn about science, sports, music, technology, nature, or history, CuriosityStream has got you covered. Just go to CuriosityStream.com slash Clayton for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series and just for you guys use the promo code Clayton and you'll save 25% off which comes out to only $14.99 a year so click the link below or go to curiositystream.com slash Clayton and save 25% right now that's only $14.99 for the whole year that's just like $1.25 per month so once again thanks to curiosity stream for sponsoring this video now back to Jurassic Park so for starters, we need to talk about the animal size. The Jurassic World Mosasaurus is obviously going to go around the ocean being unmatched and unchallenged by pretty much anything it comes up against. But what does that mean for its hunting methods? Well, Isla Nublar, the location in which the marine reptile was housed, is located 120 miles west of Costa Rica. And in Fallen Kingdom, we see that the creature has managed to make its way all the way up to the North American coast after it begins attacking people in California. So what lies in the waters in between these two locations? Well, a lot of things. For an animal the size of Jurassic World's Mosasaur, it's going to obviously need something relatively big to eat. During the Cretaceous period, when these things used to exist, the animal is believed to both hunt pretty close to the water's surface, as well as even eating things far deeper. So far, only one Mosasaur specimen has been found with its stomach contents holding animal remains, but these remains happen to be from a fish that was measurably longer than the Mosasaur's head. Some paleontologists believe that Mosasaurus may have accomplished this by both dismembering and consuming parts of their food's bodies in large parts at a time. And since there wouldn't really be anything large enough to challenge the Mosasaurus from Jurassic World, I think it's safe to say that everything would be in grave danger. Now, large animals like whales would more than likely be the Mosasaurus' prime choice of food after 2016. This means that animals like, I don't care, all of them, orcas, humpbacks, gray whales, and pretty much anything unfortunate enough to find itself in and around the area of this gigantic prehistoric monster would end up being in a very bad situation if it sought them out 
out at any given point in time. I do think that hunting the animals in a larger pod could prove to be a bit trickier for the Mosasaurus in comparison to what it usually went after at the theme park, so it's also very likely that larger sharks and maybe even stray boats would fall prey to the creature as well. Now, I say small boats would end up being in trouble because of an abandoned concept from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, where the Mosasaurus was actually going to attack a big boat and do damage to the very large ship during an unused scene for that film. Since this never materialized in the actual movie, we can't use it as too much of a legitimate piece of evidence for speculation, but it was on the table to happen way back when Fallen Kingdom was being made. It basically consisted of a whaling ship going after a whale, or a group of whales, and the Mosasaurus just attacks one of the whales and attacks the ship. It's actually pretty killer, and I really wish we got to see the scene in the fifth movie. Still, I'm of the opinion that the Mosasaurus was more than likely not going after things like this regularly after it escaped. And that's because we didn't really hear too much about it in Fallen Kingdom at all, despite the fact that the animal had, at that point in time, been roaming around the open ocean for a full two years after Jurassic Park 5's opening. This is also why I'm of the opinion that the animal probably didn't get too close to the coast up until the end of Fallen Kingdom's events, at least not on a regular daily basis. So while the Mosasaurus is known to factually have hunted things that got too close to the water surface, such as the pterosaurs in both Jurassic World world as well as in our real world, the animal more than likely did most of its hunting in the deeper parts of the ocean, away from human interference. Imagine a pod of killer whales making their way around a normal ecosystem just minding their own business, when suddenly something massive strikes one of the animals trailing behind in the back, tearing away parts of its body before swimming off and away from the scene to just eventually circle back around and do it again. Sure there would be some kind of conflict in situations like this had the Mosasaurus not planned out its attacks in advance, and truth be told the reptile is more than likely not used to hunting like this since it was fed routinely and with little to no trouble at the theme park. I mean, they had a whole crane system where they just drop stuff in its mouth. But I just can't see anything out in the modern ocean today that could do any kind of significant damage to Jurassic World's Mosasaurus. This is an animal that we've seen decimate creatures and rip them apart over the course of the two newest films. And since this clone is uniquely oversized and bred to entertain an entire coliseum worth of people, there's truly nothing besides humans that I could see doing any real damage to the animal on its own. The population of great white sharks and possibly several different species of whale would of course be in trouble over the years, but eventually the animal would find its way back to the more shallow waters of the North American coast, so the sea creatures could relax a little bit knowing that after that, mankind would be back on the menu. But still, I think it actually makes a lot of sense for this thing to have survived as long as it has on its own. Now, the Jurassic World Dominion prologue does feature a clip of it attacking the cage of some sort of ship which means it definitely will come into contact with humans out in the open waters in the new movie. But as far as if and how they will kill it, I have absolutely no idea. Jurassic World's version of the animal may not be an exact replica of what we know to exist in the fossil record, but it's definitely a creature that would be at the top of the food chain if it ever got out and around the Pacific Ocean today. And for that, I think the Jurassic Park franchise has done an excellent job at giving its fans some quality prehistoric entertainment. But what do you think happened to the animal after the events of the fifth movie? It obviously didn't die, but do you think anyone ever tried to catch it? And how would you even attempt to do something like that? What about hunting the animal down and trying to get rid of it for good so that it doesn't attack boats like what we did see go down in Dominion's prologue? Well, whatever your own thoughts happen to be, I'd love to hear them. In the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it really means the world to me that you all continue to support what I do, and I never want you to ever forget that. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video, and hope that you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like, and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.